Hey, what's up, amigos? How you guys doing? Hey, uh, sorry for such a late video, but I figured you guys might want to hear from me by now as far as what's going on. I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the chase and tell you where I'm at with the Sportster. I went ahead and put my motor mounts on here and up here. And one of the other things I also did, I bought some new spark plugs. And why not? New top end? Why not new plugs? And I have my coil set up right here. And as you can see, I've taken it back off. And why did I do that? Well, that's because while everything was hooked up, I decided to just go ahead and, you know, hit the key. And I wanted to test my spark plugs. So when I did that, I noticed I wasn't getting any fire. So I'm like, what's up with that? It's not like this thing wasn't running before I took it apart, you know? So I did a little bit of investigating. This piece right here is good. The reason I know that is because I have another one of those, just a spare, and I, and I hooked it up, and I still wasn't getting any spark, and I thought maybe it's in the key switch or something. I don't know. I'm not very good of an electrician. So I happen to have had a spare key switch, brand new, and I put it in there, and still no spark. I put an ohm meter up to the wires that go to the coil and there's no power going to the coil. And now the only wires I messed with were the wires that was hooked to the coil because I had to take the coil out of the way to take the engine apart but all the wires look good. I mean they're all running internally in the frame and nothing can happen to them there. And this is a pretty tight wiring harness I've got here. I mean nothing moves. There's no way that uh, I can get a broken wire because I mean I was very careful with my wiring when I built this bike. I have grommets where they go through the frame, you know, protecting it from you know metal edges and stuff. So, but that doesn't mean it's impossible that I could not have a bad wire. I'm not getting any power though, like I said, going to the coil or coming down this little pigtail that this you know sensor hooks to. So that tells me that it's probably the ECM, this thing right here. Is it possible that those things can just break as soon as you shut them off? I don't know. I don't get it. So I'm probably left with one of two things to do. If it's the ECM, they don't make those anymore. At least you can't get them brand new. That's an 86 to 90 era Sportster ECM. So if I want to get this thing running, I might as well, uh, I don't know. I have a spare ignition system stuck up in this lower fairing on the bagger. It's an Ultima single fire ignition. Well, you can use dual fire also. I'd, I would hate to use that because I bought it for the bagger because the bagger has a Ultima in it and if it ever goes out then I can put another one in it and but the shovel head has one of those too maybe I can put points in the shovel head and take the ignition out of the shovel head and stick it in in the tramp and it'll have a, a self-contained ignition unit I don't know choices choices or <laughs> maybe I can run the tramp on points I don't know but anyway, I got the shovel head front end put on, that Y-Glide front end, and I really think that that looks a lot better than that front end with the A-Pangers on it. I mean, aesthetically, it looks a whole lot better. It looks like it belongs that way now, and I'm really digging that. But I think I'm just going to talk about this thing right here, but I'm going to wait a little bit because I'm, I really need to plug my camera in because it's about to die. So uh, see you guys in a few. Okay, I got the camera plugged back in, and uh, this is what else I'm going to do to the motorcycle. I've been collecting parts, and I've got mid-controls for it, which is really what was on the motorcycle when it was brand new. Um, so it's pretty cool. This is for the rear brake. I've got the uh, other side for the primary, the shifting part, and I also have the shift lever stock rear brake line that goes to the brake light switch and right now i'm waiting on a rear master cylinder and uh, oh yeah and some highway pegs so i'm gonna have mid controls and highway pegs and why am i going to do that well i just don't like forward controls that much also i don't mind forward controls that have floorboards i mean that's comfortable enough like on my heritage and also on the bagger but uh, why else am i getting rid of the forward controls well they're ugly. I hate the way they look on that motorcycle. They just kind of take away the antiquiness of the bike. I mean, that, that big, bulky aluminum, you know, you can tell it's not made by Harley Davidson or you can tell it didn't come stuck. I mean, that's just me, though. I, I look at aesthetics. I want everything to flow evenly. I want it, it to look like it belongs on the bike. And so that's what I'm doing with that. And uh, what else am I going to do? Well, I haven't looked at the engine i mean i haven't taken it apart i mean i'm not going to anytime soon unless i have to 
but I haven't done any work to the engine, but I'm not really going to work on the engine. I just want to take the plugs out and take a look at them. From what I understand, I hear that shovel heads are famous for fouling out plugs, and I was told that uh, once you put a new set of plugs in them, it'll be like new again. So I'm going to pull the plugs out. I'm going to take a look at them. I mean, I did make it upset whenever I took it down the highway and it blew oil on me because it wasn't meant to go 70 miles an hour. It's not a 70 mile an hour motorcycle. The national speed limit in this country at the time uh, in the 70s was, what, 55? So, uh, you yeah, know, okay. That's not a 70 mile an hour motorcycle. But it'll do it, but just don't do it long term. So I'm going to take a look at those plugs. Okay, I got the bike up on the lift, not because it has to be, but these old Harley Davidsons have such an insane lean angle on the kickstand, so it just makes life a little easier. Hmm. Wide tanks make it kind of hard to get clearance to get a ratchet in and out. Okay, crescent wrench. <laughs> I'll hold on to these and I'll clean them up with a wire wheel or a wire brush or something like that and I, I think they'll be as good as new. Alright, scratch that. Uh, I didn't have a set of plugs, at least matching plugs to put in there, but what I did do is I put them on the wire wheel and cleaned them up pretty good and got the finer points with a wire brush and they look good as new and also I checked the plug gap and uh, the gap was set at 30, 35 and so I went ahead and set it between 38 and 40. Maybe you're not supposed to do that with a shovel, maybe it's okay, I don't know, that's what I got all my Evo set at. So I'm just going to put these things back in and uh, go see how it runs, you know? Well I think I just committed a mortal sin. I left the house without any tools on a shovel head. Let's hope I'm not pushing my luck too bad because I tell you what, whenever I get on my Evo, my soft tail, or even on the electric glide after riding this bike, I feel like it makes my Evos like state of the art technology. This thing I can tell it has the potential of having issues and lots of ghosts because uh, every time I get on this thing I learn something new about it. So far I like it. I mean this is pretty cool. It's, it's not a fast bike but it definitely feels like a Stone Age version of Harley Davidson or I really don't know how to explain it. But this is a very crude motor, very crude sounding motor. I mean the Evo, you know, it's obnoxious. But this bike here has no manners. Even Kenny told me that they have their own personality, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to find out about that because he said sometimes they don't just idle the same, you know, as they did the last time you got on them. Probably because the plugs are fouled, who knows. But since I just did what I did to the plugs, I do notice a little bit of a difference. So this is a lot of fun. Uh, other than the fact that I, because of the forward control, which is another reason why I'm ditching the forward controls, that my right foot combined with the air cleaner, I have to hold my leg there. It's, I can't just relax it because my foot's going to fall right off the peg. As you can see, the speedometer don't work. I had to pull the speedometer cable out when I put that front wheel on because that front wheel, this whole assembly isn't meant for a wheel drive speedometer. So until I get like a transmission case that has the option to put a speedometer drive in it, uh, I guess I'll just be riding around with no speedometer. But I have no idea how fast I'm going. But I'm pretty sure it's not the speed limit. But this is another one of those sit back and smell the roses type motorcycles. I mean, this thing is so primitive. When I fire the bike up, I mean, I can hear the valves moving. I can hear the lifters moving until it gets up to the oil pressure that it needs to be, apparently, because it gets quieter as it warms up. Maybe one day I'll do a road trip on it, you know? I hear there's a, a shovelhead group that shows up at the Kickstand Lodge in North Carolina in the Stokoa Valley. But uh, I think I'm going to want to get to know this thing first before I even attempt a road trip because I got to tell you, I'm a little nervous on this thing right now. I mean, I get a little nervous when I get on it, especially now that I don't have any tools on me. But I don't know how much good they would do me anyway since I don't know the shovelhead tricks. Like I said though, I can't run it too hard because it'll start peeing on me. Kenny told me that one of the oilers will start leaking if you get it past, you know, a certain speed. Like, you get it about 65 miles an hour long term, it's going to get a little resentful about it and let you know. So, I'm just going to kind of baby this thing 
I think it even handles better with this wide glide front end. I really like that. It looks a lot better. I know that the chain is a little wore out because uh, I tightened the chain a little bit, yet I can pull almost a half an inch of slack up off the sprocket. Yeah, that's one of the things I'm going to do on this thing. I'm going to change out the chain eventually. When I do that, I'm going to change the sprockets out. I may even go to a, like one tooth down on the rear so that I can get some longer legs on this thing. And uh, what else am I going to do? I, anyway, I don't know. I'm sure the sky's the limit as far as what's going to have to be done in this bike. The signal lights actually work. Funny thing is, I'm not used to signal lights where you have to hold the button down just to get the thing to blink. But I guess that's the way the old bikes were if you had blinkers. Is that a good idea or what? Should I change the sprockets? I mean, will it hurt the bike that much? You shovel people, you know, you guys who know these things. I mean, I don't really want to tear the bottom end up with too much stress or something like that because I know that might be possible. But uh, I really don't know what else to say to you guys right at the moment. I'm just having too much fun. So, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't been subscribed already for more content about this bike, about the other bikes that I got, about whatever else I'm doing, okay? And as always, you guys keep the rubber side down and you be good to yourselves, okay? Thanks a lot.